Hey, uh, again, congratulations on the award. Can you just maybe start off with your thoughts on, on being nominated for that? You know, it's a, definitely a huge blessing. I'm, I'm very thankful, very appreciative of, of uh, receiving the honor, especially on a team and an organization that has so many fantastic guys of high character that do a lot in the community themselves. And so, um, you know, there's so many uh, people in the locker room who also deserve this award and the recognition and stuff. So um, it, it definitely is a privilege to represent the Buffalo Bills, but also know there's so many other guys in the locker room doing great things in the community as well. Um, but this is definitely, a, you know, one of the most – if not the most distinguished uh, honors I've received yet in my life. And so um, definitely been having some smiles on my face recently. Great. Um, now if we could talk about your, your season, um, we talked to you, I know earlier in the year when you were first trying to figure out how you were going to play with that, you know, in that comeback mode, what has changed for you the most in these last few weeks when you got back on the field? Um, you know, really not, not too much, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, the whole year, obviously, like we, we talked beforehand, there's, there's going to be the, the ups and downs dealing with coming back from significant injury like this. And, you know, I'm still probably not my true self, um, but able to go out there and do whatever I can to help us win in whatever role that is. Um, and I guess, you know, if anything, I guess there's just more appreciation uh, for being back out there. You know, last year was sidelined due to the injury. And then this year, um, you know, being up and down and inactive or active based on the game plan and um, what's best for the team, you know, to, to help us win. And so um, just practicing like a pro, having a pro's mindset every single day, um, you know, believing in the process and that, um, you know, trusting myself that I'm going to be a football player for a long time here in the NFL and with the Buffalo Bills and just be ready whenever my number is called to go out there and perform at the, the highest level I can. When you uh, had to take a seat there for a, foot, a few weeks, you were inactive. Um, what's the, what's the thought for you? What's the, I mean, I know there's probably low moments, ebbs and flows to a season, but did you, were you down at that point realizing that you weren't playing where you needed to be playing to, to get the, you know, get playing time? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is what I do for a living. It's the um, number one passion I have. So when that's taken away from you, regardless of the reasons, it's obviously very hurtful, um, but it's a business and, um, you know, you got to be accountable. And again, you know, my body's not 100%. So I know that this is the best version of Harrison Phillips that there is. Um, but I mean, it, it obviously sucks not being able to be out there and help your team win. Um, that's why I'm so grateful for the opportunities when I do get them. Great. Thanks, Harrison. Hey, Harrison, it's John. Congratulations on the honor. Um, piggybacking off of that, how challenging has this this part of the comeback been for you? Obviously, when you're not on the field and you're rehabbing, that's one aspect. But but being on the field and you admitting you still are not yourself and fighting through that. Um, yeah, I never anticipated that the physical pain of last season would be um, almost easier to go through than the, the mental pain of this year. Um, there's, you know, it's uh, mental toughness is, I think, why players succeed in the NFL for a long time and being able to get through all the BS and, um, you know, bite, fight and scratch to make your way through. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely been a testament this year and, um, uh, you know, appreciative of any opportunities I get and hope that they, you know, I, I still earn the right to get out there um, through the rest of the season and into the playoffs and uh, take advantage of every, every opportunity I get. Do you anticipate maybe needing all of this upcoming off season and then next year is really when you can get back to the guy we saw at pre-injury? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously this is a fantastic season and you, you never want to end when you're winning games and, you know, have a great chance. Um, but there is definitely a little bit of uh, optimism towards the off season for me is a chance that I have a full, however many month window that is um, to actually train and not have to, you know, rehab where I really only had maybe a couple weeks, a month or so of hard training before the season started, everything else was kind of rehab. And to have a full off season, off season of, uh, building upon the foundation and, and getting the stuff that's, um, you know, kind of last to come. Uh, that's definitely something that I really look forward to, to have a fantastic year. And finally, you were still able, obviously, to focus and put so much time and effort into the Playmakers and your community service acts. Was it even harder at times to be so open with your time to do things like that while going through the rehab and really maybe more so than ever have, having to grind it out with your football side of things and your job? Um, a little bit, definitely. But it also was like, 
medicine in me almost too. I mean, there, there were so many, um, you know, hard things I had to go through and still am that being able to give back and serve in the community and work with some of the kids that I work with, um, you know, kind of wipes away all the pain and gives you such great perspective on things that are really going outside of there. And maybe that's why this season's even been a little more difficult mentally is, you know, I haven't been able to get with the kids. I've still been able to put on some events, but can't be there physically. Um, and that's kind of like a remedy for me um, to really get a, a true grasp on what really matters outside of this. And so um, that's one thing I'm missing, but definitely, um, yeah, I'll bet answer your question, I guess. Thanks a lot, Harrison. Congratulations. Hey, Harrison. Dante Lasting, Bills.com. Congratulations on the honor. Thank um, you. Outside observers are calling this game the game of the week. How cool is it to be playing in a regular season game that's this important late in the season? Well, I know that for a long time, we've always talked about playing your best yeah. football um, yeah. in, in December. And so uh, that's been a, a point for us. The, the whole season is to make sure that we're playing our best in, in the end towards this, the playoff stretch. Um, and, you know, anytime you get the opportunity to play at home, I know we're not in front of fans, but defend our dirt is, is obviously a great um, task in front of us and a fantastic opponent too. So everything is, um, you know, shaping up to be a, a big game. But, you know, we say – you know, the most important game of the year is always the next game. And so this week, this happens to be the most important game of the year. And next week, it, it continues going on and on and on. So, um, you know, we're not trying to make it too big, but we obviously um, have a grasp on, on how big of a game it can be. Definitely. And do you feel like the team and the defense is starting to play its best football at the right time? Yeah, I mean, I think there's starting to be some real flashes here in the last few weeks of um, – you know, the identity of our defense and taking the ball away and goal line stands and, and fourth down, uh, turnover on downs and things like that where we really bow up. And so it's, it's great to see the identity of our team shaping up, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Well, thank you so much and uh, good luck this weekend. Thanks. Hey, Harrison, Jason Wolf with the Buffalo News. How's it going, man? Good, good. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Curious uh, what you think of uh, AJ Epinesa and the way he's coming along and how the challenges that he faces this season maybe compare to what you had to deal with when you came in as a rookie. Um, yeah, I mean, I think AJ's uh, obviously coming, coming along very well and um, he, he's shown some fantastic flashes of uh, his athletic ability. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of growth on his side from understanding the playbook as well. Um, which is obviously a difficult task as a rookie to, to overcome. Um, but he, he's probably his hardest critic and, and um, you know, always holds himself to a very high standard. And so, um, you know, that jump from college to the NFL and, you know, fluctuating weight and the position and the defense all kind of changes a little bit. Um, and so, you know, I think he's very hard on himself, but he definitely shows the potential to have a, a very bright future, future in the NFL. Also curious uh, what you've seen out of Jerry Hughes this year, whether he's taking on more of a leadership role behind the scenes. I know he's, he's really taken over uh, some ball games here this season. Just how have you seen Jerry uh, develop from last season to, to this season into, you know, a leader behind the scenes? Yeah. I mean, I think Jerry, uh, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head there. I think Jerry has been an underrated player in the NFL for a very long time. He's a fantastic defensive end and, um, constantly is disrupting disrupting football games and helping us win. Um, and, and on the leadership point, yeah, I believe he did step up more so this year. Um, and uh, kind of just whenever whenever Jerry speaks, people listen. Um, he, he's obviously a veteran and proved that he can. He's very successful in the NFL, and so um, he's done a great job in taking over uh, the leadership of our room and and uh, being a great leader on our defense as well. Cool. Thanks, man. Congrats again on your award, and good luck to you this weekend. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Uh, Harrison, uh, congratulations on being the Bills representative for the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Hope to see you in Tampa up there uh, receiving that award in Tampa, Florida. You know, uh, that sounds fantastic, but I hope I have to miss it for the Super Bowl. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you come up. <laughs> yes, that's right. Absolutely. I hope I got to miss that. Yeah, I'll, I'll send somebody in my, in my honor. Beautiful, beautiful. That's good thinking. Uh, my question this week is, with the weather turning uh, bad and you're getting the last four games mostly likely cold weather, how, does, how do you prepare your body for these games? Like, example, you have a Sunday night and then you turn right around and have a Saturday coming up. Yeah, um, rest and recovery is the most important part, uh, you know, this part of the season. A lot of the play calls that we have, we've done now 100 times. 
Um, so the mental side of it isn't, isn't as important um, as the physical side at this point in the season. So making sure we get our rest, um, making sure that we, you know, um, are taking advantage of every opportunity, whether sometimes, you know, as the, as the days get shorter, sometimes our work day gets a little shorter too. If coach is going to give us an extra 30 minutes outside, you know, cut something short, we got to take advantage of that and not go home and just play video games or scroll on your phone. Um, really take advantage of that time. And then, um, you know, another thing too is when it gets cold and, and the weather's like this, you know, teams start to run the ball a little bit more, which is a little bit more physical on the body too. You know, you, you play a team that passes the ball 50 times, it's all quick, quick, quick. Well, if a team wants to pound the football, you know, that's where you're taking the, the shots on the bodies and the double teams and anchoring combo blocks. And so um, that starts to show up more too. So it's, it's very important. It's very important to be ready for that. All righty. I appreciate your time. Right, take care. Thank you. Hi, Harrison. Uh, Rich Donnelly, Channel 10 in Rochester. Uh, congrats on the award. And what difference have you noticed with some of the kids going through Playmakers from when they enter the camp and when, you know, the time's kind of over when around you? Yeah, well, you know, so obviously our, our my football camp is the biggest thing that we do in terms of volume. You know, we have three, four hundred, hundred kids and families participate. And so in those short days, you know, more than anything, you, you see kids – kind of get out of their shell a little bit. And then most important thing, I try to give them a little bit of confidence and know that whatever the task is, um, you know, they can complete it in some type of way, some fashion. We can, um, you know, make any drill possible for them, regardless of if you're in a wheelchair, if you're intellectually disabled, whatever your ability level is, we'll find a way for you to do that. And then number two, um, help educate the kids that, again, regardless of their ability, um, they're able to help other people too, and that they can pay it forward and give back. And so um, as small as holding the door open for someone or writing someone a, a kind letter or whatever it may be, um, teaching the kids that. But I think the, the most um, change I see in the kids that I work with is with the ongoing events. So, you know, um, pre-COVID we were doing, I, was, I think I had almost 10 events here in the Western New York area with my Playmaker organization. And I would say we've had, we probably had 20 kids go to all 10 events. So these, are, these aren't just kids that I mean. Now, these are like my friends. These are the people I hang out with. And to see their growth and our relationships grow um, is, is unbelievable. So, you know, you have a Francesca, who the first night I ever met her, uh, she was too scared to, to come up and say hi. To now, if, if she's 100 yards that way, she's going to sprint and yell my name until we can go hug somewhere. So um, I think those relationships are great. And to see the kids' confidence grow, um, over the last three years I've been here in Buffalo has just been tremendous. You described how they were somewhat medicine for you in a way. How inspiring are they really when you had a long day and all of a sudden you see a bright smile from one of these kids that you know has a difference been made with them because of some of the work that you've done? Yeah, I think it just, you know, puts your identity, you know, when, when you care so much about football and that's what your job is and that's what you get paid to do and you know, a lot of what I have is because of football. A lot of, it makes me, you, me believe that my identity is I'm a football player. And doing the work that I do, you know, seeing, you know, being a servant and, um, you know, philanthropical and donating my time and, and resources to these kids, it, it helps shift, you know, our identity outside of that. You know, I'm, I'm not married. I don't have children of my own. I know a lot of guys, you know, their identity is being a father or being a husband. And, um, you know, I think just being a good person and finding ways to give back helps so that when football's not growing great or, you know, we all know the inevitable that football is going to end for us at some point in time, that that transition out, out of football into the real world is a little bit easier because your identity is rooted in something else. When you see some of the you know, very premier names who have won this award in the past, how motivating is it for you to continue the work that you're doing, not necessarily for recognition, but because you know how impactful some of your work can be on the greater community. Um, it's extremely inspiring. Like you said, the list of names of even the nominees who have been up for this award and reading what they've done in their communities is inspiring to know that, you know, what we do matters and that it affects so many lives and it brings such a positive light to the NFL and showing, uh, you know, how many great players there are in the NFL who, who want to do well and do good for our communities. It restores faith in humanity. Um, and again, I know that there's a few things that come with this award, obviously recognition. Um, I think there's also monetary donations to, you know, the foundations and to know how great and, and how vast that's going to go here in Western New York through my foundation and the amount of kids that we're going to reach and the uh, amazing activities we're going to be able to do because of that. Um, that's what really gets me excited about the award is, is, is knowing what's ahead. 